Good morning, church. May I ask everyone to please, please rise and um, as we begin to worship God today, let us prepare our hearts to worship Him with songs. And let me encourage you with this verse, um, this passage of Scripture in Acts 16, verse 25 to 26. It says there, About midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God and the prisoners were listening to them. You know a little context from this. The, Paul and Silas had just performed a miracle. And sometimes, you know, we have those questions where, Lord, kinagawa ko naman yung pinapagawa mo sa akin. I come to church every Sunday. I do victory group. I do one-to-one. -one. But Lord, but ko experience to ngayon? Bakit ako nag-experience ng lack? Bakit ako nag-experience ng loss? And sometimes it makes it hard for us to worship God and it makes it hard for us to pray. It makes it hard for us to do devotion like because what's the use if I am going to just continue experiencing these struggles? But you know what the amazing thing is? It doesn't end there for Paul and Silas. In verse 26, as a result of their devotion to God that even though they were imprisoned for doing something that was miraculous and doing something that was empowered by God they prayed and they sang and as a result a sudden suddenly there was a great earthquake so that the foundations of the prison were shaken and immediately all the doors were opened and everyone's bonds were unfastened 
Church, I don't know what it is that is keeping you bonded, keeping you from worshiping God today. But right now, let's just sing our songs. Let's just sing our praises unto Him. And surely He will cause an earthquake in our lives. He will cause the bondages that keep us from worshiping Him to be broken and to free us and to liberate us from that. So Lord, we praise You and we worship You today with our voices. We honor You, Lord God, in our worship. Receive our praise, receive our praise, and dwell in the praise of Your people this morning. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. And everybody say, Amen, Amen. Let's worship God this morning. Lord, we lift up our voices and give to you our best of worship today, God. You are worthy of all praises and we give it to you with all of our hearts. Come on.
you can do all things. Impossible things.
Stop! 
our lives and our family. you have wiped that sin away blotted it out lord you no longer see it right now we repent and we look towards you lord god we forget our sin we forget what we've done and we remember what jesus christ did on the cross thank you lord it is out of your love that you grant us this mercy thank you lord for your faithfulness we receive it lord we receive your brand new mercy this morning Thank you, God. Right now, I feel like um, I just sense that some of us here, you know, we're, I don't know if, if I feel like someone here is, God is leading you into a transition. God is leading you into a new season in your life. And the only problem is you are running away from Him. You're running away from His voice. You know really well what God is telling you to do but I guess it's just out of the out of human nature that we run away from God because we feel like we know more than he does but God is God is reminding us right now that you can tap on him for confidence you can bet on his faithfulness that he will not fail you in this coming season of your life as you step out of that boat as you move into a new transition in your life whatever it is that God is telling you to do wherever he is wherever it is that he's directing you to go and I don't know that's between you and God maybe it's maybe it's surrendering your life to him maybe you just can't seem to surrender a single there's an area in your life that you have not committed to God yet and and you're afraid maybe because you've grown accustomed to that area of your life you've grown fond of it you you're afraid of letting it go because you don't know what might happen but God is saying trust me God is saying I am faithful I never fail my children and I never will so right now, why don't we just 
we surrender that to God right now. Why don't we just lift it up to God? Why don't we raise our hands and let's raise our hands to God. Lord, here are your people. Here are your children. Right now, Lord, we just surrender our whole lives unto you. Lord, there may be, there may be some things that we can't seem to let go. Some things that are weighing us down. Some things that are just maybe even toxic to our lives and we're afraid to let it go because um, we already grew fond of it we're afraid that if we let it go we are not sure about what will happen but thank you because today you are reminding us that we can have confidence in you we can have confidence in your power we can have confidence in your provision like you've provided in the desert. You've given us water, you've given us food. Looking back in the past, you have taken care of us well. And it won't stop here, Lord. So right now, Lord, as difficult it, as it may be, we're letting go of that, that burden, Lord. We're letting go of that thing that you're telling us to let go of. We are taking the step of faith, Lord God, and we're following your voice this time. No running, Lord. No running. We're following you this time, Lord. Give us the confidence to let go of what it is that's heavy that we're holding with two hands. Let it go so that we can hold on to your hand. Thank you, Lord, for your faithfulness. Thank you that even if we are faithless, you remain faithful. Thank you for the reminder that you will never fail your children. Lord, right now we just, we honor you and give you all the glory. We praise you, Lord, and we worship you in Jesus' mighty name we pray. And the church says, Amen. Amen. All right, good morning, everyone. As you take your seats, why don't you say hello to the person next to you? Good morning, everyone. For those of you who are new here, um, I am RC. I'm one of our leaders here in Victory. And uh, we like to do two things here, and that's to honor God and make disciples. And part of honoring God is through our giving. And it's one way we can worship God as well. Um, if you notice, there are envelopes in your seats. And um, if you find it in your heart to give, um, there are check boxes there that you can put the check mark on. If you'd like to give or pledge to our Real Life Foundation, um, uh, by the way, the Real Life Foundation, it's a, a scholarship program, and we are about to have our first ever Real Life Scholar here in Victory Puerto Princesa. So if you'd like to continue to give, and we, we, we thank you for your generosity, if you'd like to continue to give there, you can just put a check mark on Real Life. And there are other ways you can give as well. There's um, even through our Every Nation campus, just make sure you put local so that it will go to our local campus movement here. And for our, uh, for our building project, our building fund, you can also check that on the, um, on the building fund there, you'll find in the envelopes. And we would also very much like to celebrate with you. If you have answered prayers, please write them down. We, we also would like to pray for you if you have any prayer requests, write them down at the envelope. We'd love to pray for you. And, you know, after the service, if you'd like to be prayed for as well, you can just approach any of our ushers, our leaders here in Victory, and we'd love to pray for you if you need prayers. And um, after that, you can drop your tight box, uh, tights and offerings at the tight box at the exit after the worship service. And you can also give through this link here, as you can see in the screen, just scan the QR code if you want to give online. Uh, that works as well. And we just want to thank you very much for your generosity, for your heart to give. And with that, let me just pray for everyone here. Lord, thank you for uh, just giving these people, giving us, Lord, your children, the heart to give. I pray that you continue to bless us, Lord. Bless us abundantly so that we can continue to be a blessing to others, Lord. I pray for those who will be giving, Lord, I pray that you continue to provide for them. Lord, I pray that you continue to 
um, remind them of your faithfulness and remain faithful, Lord God, to these people. And for those, Lord God, who are struggling financially, I just pray for them, Lord, that open doors and opportunities will just happen, Lord. I pray, Lord God, for an abundance, Lord God, for them and for their household, Lord, that there will be a sudden rush of of abundance, Lord. There will be a sudden overflow of blessings from you, Lord, for those people who are struggling financially. Lord, I pray for the offerings that, that we'll receive today. I pray that your offering, Lord, will go only to the advancement of your kingdom, Lord. It will fund the advancement of your kingdom, and it will go nowhere else, Lord God. I pray that the gospel will be preached and will be spread through today's giving. So, Lord, we worship you in our generosity, and we thank you, Lord, for placing that generosity in our hearts. Thank you for your blessings, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Thank you, everyone, for your heart again uh, to give and your generosity and your prayers as well for uh, this this church and for what we're doing here in Victory Prayer to Princesa. So that being said, let us enjoy and uh, prepare our hearts for the preaching of the word. And God said, Behold, I have given you every plant yielding seed that is on the face of all the earth, and every tree with seed in its fruit. While the earth remains, seed time and harvest, cold and heat, summer and winter, day and night shall not cease. Sojourn in this land and I will be with you and I will bless you. For to you and to your offspring, I will give all these lands. All right, good morning everyone. Welcome to Victory Puerto Princesa. Can you turn to your neighbor and say, I'm glad you're here this morning. Ayan. mo naman para maniwala sa sinasabi mo. <laughs> so it's nice to see everyone here. It's nice to see all of your beautiful smiling faces. Uh, this is our second week, second week in the series, Seed Time and Harvest. But before we start with the preaching, we have an announcement to make. Alam niyo ba that today in Victory Coron, they have finally officially launched their church today. Ayan, so palakpakan po natin. Ayan, so Pastor Edward, if you notice, wala po siya dito. He is there right now giving support para sa ating uh, fellow Palawenos. So Victory Coron just started their grand lunch today and they are celebrating it with us. So a shout out, Pastor uh, Richie, if you are there. If you see us online, congrats. Ayan, so sakto rin siya because our topic for today is about breakthroughs and new beginnings. Ayan. So how many of you have wished that you could start over in life? May mga nagawa na ba kayo that you have eventually regretted? Ayan. Show of hands, show of hands. How many of you have had regrets before? Ayan. Siguro lahat naman tayo, no? Ayan. So we have all experienced regrets and sometimes we wish that we could start over. Minsan parang may mga situation tayo in life na, na consequences of our past actions. And then sometimes we wish there's a way to reverse that. Diba? Para inisip lang natin, if only I knew better. If only I was old enough to understand this. Naalala ko yan before I had, uh, nung first job ko, mataas pa yung salary namin. But I didn't know how to manage my, my uh, funds. So ang nangyari, nasayang lang lahat. So how many of you ganun, nung bata, di ba? Buti pa tayo nung college, nung high school, ang dami natin pambili ng gamit. Ngayon na may trabaho na naghihirap na tayong lahat. <laughs> Ayan. So if only I was older, if only I knew better. Speaking of, if I was only older, I see my mother here. Uh, happy birthday, mother. <laughs> uh, yeah, taas na kamay, taas na kamay. Nahihiya siya eh pag may attention eh, kaya kinol out ko. <laughs> happy birthday, thank you. It's because of you that I am standing here today. Ayan. Naalala ko nung, fir- nung first time ako nag-20 years old na birthday. How many of you nung nag-20 years old ka, parang kinakabahan ka? Yung parang, hala, pag nag-20 na ako, parang big life change na. Iba- ibang-ibang tao na ako. Kabahat nung kabahat. By the way, that was uh, last year lang, nung nag-20. Yeah. So when I turned 20, 19 years old, diba? tapos biglang na birthday ako, 20 years old. And then I realized ko, parang walang difference. <laughs> parang walang nagbago, ganun pa rin ako. <laughs> diba? How many of you like that? Diba? Kasi out of teenage life na, so 20 years old, akala mo ang laki ng change, akala mo biglaan na biglang magbabagong tao ka na, akala mo sobrang mature ka na, but actually, it only uh, changes you a little bit. 
because ang growth natin, ang change natin, takes time. Tama po ba? It takes a while before our growth is seen. Di ba? Parang pag yung kaibigan mo, matagal mo nang hindi nakita, tapos nagkita kayo, ang tangkad niya na, di ba? Ang dami ng changes. That's the only time we realize because change happens slowly and growth happens slowly. It's the same as planting a seed. Ayan, di ba? Nakonect ko sa topic natin ngayon. So seed time and harvest. Ano ba ibig sabihin ng seed time and harvest? Seed time and harvest talks about how God's provision is like a seed. The miracle of a seed. And we will dive deeper into that with our topic today titled, The Breakthrough You Need. And how many of you here need a breakthrough right now? How many of you are struggling right now and is praying, God, I need a breakthrough right now? Show of hands. And we are claiming that today we will experience God's breakthrough. Amen? And so can we all stand up and turn our Bibles to Genesis chapter 8, verses 20 to 22. And we'll be reading a very familiar story. Genesis 8.20, it says here, Then Noah built an altar to the Lord and took some of every clean animal and some of every clean bird and offered burnt offerings on the altar. And when the Lord smelled the pleasing aroma, the Lord said in his heart, I will never again curse the ground because of man, for the intention of man's heart is evil from his youth. Neither will I ever again strike down every living creature as I have done. While the earth remains, seed time and harvest, cold and heat, summer and winter, day and night shall not. This is the word of the Lord. God, we thank you for your word this morning. Thank you, Lord, for uh, giving us something today, O Lord. And we are praying, God, that by the end of this service, Lord, we will experience fresh revelations from you, Lord, that will lead to bring in our lives, God. So we thank you, God, for this. We offer this day to you. Use me as your mouthpiece to deliver your message. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay, you may now take your seats. And so judging by the verse that we just read, this story will be about Noah. <laughs> so mga iilan na nagbasa ng verse with me, no? The story is about Noah. Ayan. Yes, it is about breakthroughs, but we are looking at the story of Noah to understand the lesson. So how many of you know the story of Noah and the Great Flood? Taas na kamay. Ayan, okay. So marami sa atin, no? especially if you grew up in a Christian family, di ba tinuturo to sa mga kids' books. So today, we will be going through the story of Noah. So just in case some of us don't know his story, we will go through that today. Okay. So we will start in Genesis chapter 6, verse 5. Ayan. So magkikids church muna tayo this morning. So in chapter, uh, ver- chapter 6, verse 5 of Genesis, it says, The Lord saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth and that every intention of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. So in ver- chapter 6, verse 5, sabi dito na parang na, you, uh, when God created the heavens and the earth, when God created man kasi, ang initial plan ni God, uh, magiging ano tayo, na magiging uh, mababait tayo mga tao. <laughs> Mabubuting tao. So yun yung uh, initial intention ni God when He created us. Unfortunately, because of what Adam and Eve did, sin entered humanity. And when sin entered humanity, tuloy-tuloy na yun. It was not just our relationship with God that was broken. It was also our relationship with one another that was broken. Ayan. So what happened was mankind became evil. Tapos tuloy-tuloy na yun. Until the whole world was so corrupt. So chapter 6, verse 5 says na yung buong mundo. Imagine yung buong mundo, lahat ng tao, masasama na. And then in chapter 6, verse 6, sabi ni Lord, it says here, And the Lord, what does it say? regretted that he had made man on the earth and it grieved him to his heart. The Lord regretted. What does that mean? Ibig sabihin ba, nagsisi si Lord? Ibig sabihin, that, does it mean that God made a mistake, do you think? If we look back at the translation, the word regretted here comes from the word nakam. Nakam. Ayan. Sabihin mo sa katabi mo, nakam. Dapat may parang plema pa, nakam. Ayan. <laughs> so the word regretted comes from a word nakham, which means sometimes it translates into repent, which means a change of mind, and sometimes it is uh, translated as to feel sorrow or be grieved. 
So when God saw na yung mga tao nagkakagulo na, ang dami ng mga sinungaling, ang dami ng magnanakaw, ang dami ng corrupt sa mundo, God felt grieved. So God was hurt. Okay? His heart was hurt. Sino dito heartbroken today? How many of you have regrets and are hurting right now? Show of hands. Ayan. Show of hands para mamaya mapag-pray namin kayo. <laughs> Ma-comfort namin kayo. So God was grieved. He was hurting because He saw that His creation was like that. And if you're a parent now, I'm sure you can understand this. When you're growing up, di ba? Na bata pala yung anak mo, so innocent, di ba? Ang bait-bait. And then suddenly, when he reaches his teenage years, parang, parang ibang tao na siya. Especially when they are introduced to the world. And then as a parent, you understand the grief of God. Na parang kung ano-ano ng ginagawa ng anak ko, di ba? Ang dami ng ginagawa sa mundo. That is what God felt when He saw His creation. But fortunately, may isang tao, isang tao lang na mabait sa buong mundo. Alam niyo kung sino? Si Noah. Very good class. So there was one person who God found favor in and he was Noah. It says in verse 8 to 9, But Noah found favor in the eyes of the Lord. These are the generations of Noah. Noah was a righteous man, blameless in his generation. Noah walked with God. So Noah was the one person that found favor in God's eyes. So nung sinabi ni God kay Noah, Noah, ganito ang plano ko. Dahil ikaw lang yung mabait, alam mo gagawin ko? I will flood the entire earth. A great flood and every living thing on earth will die except for you and your family. So yun, sinasabi niya kay Noah. Tapos si Noah parang uh, nagulat siya kasi the God, God spoke to him and then God was willing to spare him and his family. So God explained to Noah how he was gonna save Noah kasi it was gonna be a great flood. So Noah had to build an ark, a huge boat. Sabi sa verse, 14, it says, Make yourself an ark of gopher wood, make rooms in the ark, and cover it inside and out with pitch. And in verse 15, ang galing nito because God gave specific instructions to Noah. Hindi niya lang sinabi na, Noah, go and make an ark. No, God gave specific instructions. Gano kalaki? What was the material to be used? How many floors did it have? And he said, to make it 300 cubits long, 50 cubits wide, and 30 cubits tall. So ito yung blueprint nung uh, Noah's Ark, yan, ganyan yung itsura niya. So it was that long, it was that high and that big. So ano ba yung cubit? How many of you know what a cubit is? Are you familiar with that? So yung cubit pala, yung ginagamit sa Bible, it's a measurement back in that time. And one cubit is equal to one arm's length. Ayan, yan ang isang cubit. Okay, so i-measure yung cubit ninyo. Okay, may biceps pa yan. Cubit ni RC yan eh. Ayan. Pinicture ko lang. So one cubit depends on the length of the arm. So parang kakaiba, di ba? Wala siyang standard. Parang nagdedepende sa tao. Do you know what other culture measures like that? The Philippines. Gano'ng kahaba ang isang dangkal? <laughs> sa akin, ganito. Sa'yo, gano'ng kahaba? <laughs> Depende, di ba? Pag magagawa ka ng kanin, ilang tubig? Saan yung measurement para sa perfect rice? Dito, di ba? <laughs> oh, so it depends. On us. So, iba yung measurement natin. Kung si Shaquille O'Neal gumawa ng tubig, baka basa-basa yung tubig, magiging lugaw. Kasi ganun kahaba yung daliri niya. So, in the same way, parang ganun din sa atin. Di ba sa atin, our measurements are, may mga measurements tayo na ganun, isang dangkal, isang bisig, isang talampakan, isang dipa, ayan. Uh, sinerge ko yan for uh, reference kasi hindi ko rin alam eh. <laughs> RC take note, okay? <laughs> ayan. So, ganyan yung measurement natin sa Philippines. So, yung isang bisig, it's the same as one cubit. Ayan. So pareho pala tayo ng mga cultures nila before, no? So one cubit is one arm's length. So if you convert it, yung, yung typical na length ng mga tao back then, it, it ranges from 17 inches to 22 inches in length. So at its maximum, 300 cubits could be as big as 550 feet long. Ayan. So ako na nagawa ng math for you. 50 cubits, 92 feet wide, and 30 cubits, 55 feet tall. So here's a picture of a real-life ark created today. Ayan. So that is the, called the Ark Encounter. So parang they were a group of people who wanted to replicate the ark in real-life measurements. So ang kinuha nilang measurements, more or less mga 510 feet. So I don't know if you can see the people down there. Nakikita nyo ba? Parang langgam, sobrang liit. Ganyan kaliit yung tao compared to how big the ark is. So it was huge. If you look at the area, 
surrounding the ark, it's almost five times yung size ng Air Philippines airplane. So, ganun kalaki yung size niya. And then, God told Noah to make three floors. Sabi niya, make a roof for the ark and then set the door of the ark to the side. Make it lower, second, and third dock. This is verse 16. So, if we look at the square, uh, the area of the ark, just looking at the length and width, it was 15,372.59 square meters. Sino dito ganun kalaki yung lote ninyo? Okay. Sino sa inyo, yun yung breakthrough na hinihintay ninyo. <laughs> so imagine that huge of area space, tapos three floors. So times three pa yun. And then I have a question for you. How many animals did Loma bring to the ark? How many animals? Two of each. Yun din yung akala ko nung bata ako. <laughs> it was actually two of each kind. And this is significant. Why? Because Noah did not bring two of each animal, as in dalawang German Shepherd, dalawang Husky, dalawang Askal, ganon. <laughs> Hindi ganon. Noah brought two of each kind of animal. So the animals that could interbreed, for example, mga aso, uh, dogs, wolves, coyotes, they're allowed to interbreed. Noah only brought two of each of them. So Noah could have brought one dog and one wolf to the ark. And that covered for all of the canines. Gets? So it was each kind. So hindi siya per species. And then seven pairs of each kind of clean animal, seven pairs of each kind of bird. So yung ark encounter kanina, yung pinakita ko sa inyo, they also did the research because they wanted to see how many animals were brought. So this is how many animals they were able to sum up. Here's a picture of all of their names. Ayan, nababasa niyo ba? <laughs> Kung nababasa niya yan, very good. Uh, 2020 vision. So those are all of the kinds of animals. And if you sum it up in the total, it was a lot less than 2,000 kinds of animals. So ganun lang pala karami yung dinala ni Noah. So if you turn this into pairs and then into groups of seven, around 16,000 animals siguro, more or less. Probably a lot less. And if you take into consideration the size of the ark, there was plenty of space for food and other things in the ark. So why am I bringing this up? Because many of us, as we grow up, when we read about the story of the ark, minsan makakabasa tayo ng mga critics saying that the ark was not a true story. People who are questioning the Bible. That's why I want us to understand the importance of this, because through this, we will understand the truth of God's word. If you want to know more, merong book, sobrang ganda nito, Noah's Ark, A Feasibility Study, by John Wood Morap. And he did all of the research and explained niya paano kumain sila Noah, Paano kumain yung family niya, and then how they were able to approach it. Or if you're like me, mas napaprefer niyo manood ng videos, you can watch the Ark Encounter YouTube channel. Ayan. Sponsored. Sila, they were the same people who made the uh, Ark itself. Ayan. Okay, going back to the story. So when Noah made the Ark, it rained for 40 days and 40 nights. The water continued to rise up for 150 days. And then the water started to go down for 150 days. And then Noah sent out a dove to check kung may land na. And then the dove came back. Noah sent it again. The dove came back. This happened three times until it was confirmed that the earth was dry. So this is a picture of the timeline. Okay, ito yung mga nangyari ng ark ni Noah. Yan, during the great flood. So you just have to pay attention to the left side, the summary. The waters rose for 150 days, meaning five months. Paakit yung tubig until the mountains were covered. And then for five months, the water slowly went down. But even when the water went down, it still took 70 days before the earth dried up. So in total, Noah was on the ark for 370 days. So nag-birthday na siya sa ark. Ganun katagal. And then suddenly, when the earth was dry, Noah opened it, let the animals let loose. And then Noah built an altar to the Lord and took some of every clean animal as an offering. So sabi, nagpasalamat si Noah. Di ba, parang two of each kind na lang, sinunog niya pa yung iba, no? Di ko lang kung ano yung ni Noah. And then he gave thanks to God. Gratitude praised him. And then God blessed Noah and his sons. So what does this have to do with our topic of seed time and harvest? What can we learn from Noah? Amen. When we talk about seeds... Diba? Sino dito mga plantito at plantita? Meron ba? Show of hands. Mga mahilig sa tanim? Yan, okay. 
be proud yan because we need your help <laughs> kami ng asawa ko wala kaming idea ko ano yung <laughs> kailangan gawin sa mga halaman when you grow a seed there are a few things you need tama you need water sun air and soil okay but ultimately growing a seed requires proper care patience and faith alam niyo ba yon did you know that growing a seed takes faith let me explain. Alam nyo, pag nag, nagtatatim ka ng seed, and then you start to water it, you give it sun, you give it air, how many of you know, hindi ka pa rin sure kung tutubo ba talaga siya? Because anything can happen, tama po ba? Anytime pwedeng biglang magbagyo, anytime insects can come and destroy the plant, anytime something can happen. So it takes faith for that plant to grow. I remember nung nasa office kami, Alam niyo, walang tumagal na halaman sa amin. May mga tao, there are people who have green thumbs. I think everyone in our office has black thumbs. <laughs> Saan ka nakakita? Cactus na matay. <laughs> Ganong kalala. <laughs> That's how bad we were in the staff. Buti lang si Jove andun na, medyo may alam. Pero nung panahon na sila isa pa kasama namin, walang tumatagal talaga. Kaya plastic na lang yung halaman na ginagamit namin doon. <laughs> so yung mga plantito, plantita, we need your help desperately. So it takes faith to grow plants because you're not sure how the, how the plant will grow and if it will grow right. Ito, picture ng isang halaman na meron sa bahay namin, ng asawa ko. La, ano, two Sundays ago, girlfriend patawag ko. No? Ay, hindi, last month pala. <laughs> Ang bilis ng panahon. Yan, so there's a plant that was in our house. Ano ba yan? <laughs> For the plantitos and plantitas, baka alam ninyo, baka you can help us. Kasi hindi namin alam kung gagawin namin dyan. So we start watering it. We gave it room to grow. Pero napansin namin yung mga ibang halaman na nasa araw, parang naninilaw. They were turning yellow. Tapos yung nasa shade were very green. So we have no idea why. <laughs> because we were not prepared for that. And when you grow a plant, sometimes it takes faith to know that it will grow properly with the right amount of water, soil, air, and sun. Pero alam nyo, no matter how much we do everything right, the seed still needs God to bear fruit. Why? When you plant a seed, o tayo bilang mga tao, what do we do? We plant a seed, we put water, we put fertilizer, we give it room to grow. But what else does the plant need? It needs the sun. It needs air. And the sun and the air can only come from God. So no matter how good we do things with the seed, it still needs God to bear fruit. And I'm uh, talking about the seed because today we are liking the seed to God's provisions. Because God's provision is like a seed. Remember last week. Sino ba umatan last week? Meron ba dito? Who were, you, who were present last week? Kamay? Okay, yan. Okay, so last week we talked about how God provided for us beforehand. Tama po ba? Na uh, bagong creation pa lang ng mundo, God already provided for us. So just like a seed, God had already planted the seed of provision. We just need to know how to be patient, faithful, and learn how to handle it with care. So tulad ng pagtatanim, God has already provided for us. Parang buto yan na tinanim na ni Lord. Now on our part, we just need to have a little bit of work we need to know how to handle it with care. We need to learn how to be patient and we need to learn how to be faithful. And when we do, it's God's miracle that will make it bear fruit and multiply. So God's provision is like a seed. So let me give you an example. Ano ba yung mga provisions ni God? For example, finances. Okay, how many of you are praying for a breakthrough financially? Show of hands. Ayan, konti lang. Buti pa yung iba. <laughs> Kami rin, eh, two hands. <laughs> yeah, so we are praying for a breakthrough financially. God's provision is finances. Tama po ba? So God has already given us an ability to produce wealth. God already gave us opportunities na magtrabaho. Now the question is, how will we handle God's provision? Gagamitin ba natin sa tama? Or hindi? Just like a seed, will we be handling it with care or not? Do we know the right amount of water, sunlight that a plant needs to grow or not? Just like when God has provided for us, do we know what we're supposed to do with that provision? Oh, hindi. 
So if we know what to do with that provision, how many of you know if we use our finances for God's glory, it will multiply and bear fruit? Amen? But it's not because of what we do, but it's because of the miracle of God. Because no matter how well we do everything, without God's miracles, our finances will never grow. It will not multiply. It's the same with other provisions. Ano pa ba yung mga ibang provision ni God? Talents. Diba? God has already given us the talents that we need to serve Him. Question is, how are you going to use those talents? Are you going to use it to serve Him or not? And if you use it to serve Him, eventually God's miracle will make that talent grow, bear fruit, and maybe pag nag-serve ka sa church, you'll never know, baka may ma-reach out dahil sa pag-serve mo. Mahalin mo, nag-serve ka as an usher, nginitian mo lang yung dumating, na-convert na naging Christian. <clears throat> What's another provision of God? Another provision, another example. Good looks daw, sabi ni RC. How are you gonna use your good looks, RC? <laughs> For the glory of God. Diba, meron ganun. So God has given us provisions. It's up to us how we're going to handle it with care. And it's up to God how He will miraculously make it grow and bear fruit. Now, another provision of God that sometimes we overlook is His Word. Alam niyo ba that God's word is a provision in itself? Did you know that God has already provided us His word to help us in life? When we look at the story of Noah, it was only God's word who sustained him throughout the flood. It was God's word that prepared him, sustained him, and gave him breakthrough. So today, there are three things I want to talk about when it comes to God's Word. Number one is, God's Word prepares us for the storm. Thank you, Tita Flor, for the provision of water. So God's Word prepares us for the storm. When you look at the story of Noah, <clears throat> how was Noah able to survive the storm? Diba binigay ni God sa kanya yung exact instructions. God gave the exact length of the ark, the height of the ark, the width of the ark, so no one knew exactly what he was supposed to do. Now, how many of you wish God still spoke that way to us today? Na parang, Lord, hindi ko lamang gagawin ko. Lord, sana kausapin mo na lang ako. Bigay mo na lang sa akin specific instructions, Lord, para magawa ako. How many of you know it would have been easier, no? If God just told us exactly what to do, Lord, anong course ba dapat ko itake? Lord, anong trabaho ba kukunin ko? Lord, ano bang gagawin ko sa buhay ko? Lord, anong gagawin ko? Sometimes it's so easy to pray na sana, Lord, you just speak to us clearly and specifically so we know what to do. But did you know that God already did? Sometimes we're praying for God's will, not realizing that God's will is already written in your Bibles. So turn to your neighbor, sabihin mo, magbasa ka ng Bible. <clears throat> Many of us, parang hindi natin alam kung anong gusto ni Lord para sa atin. Lord, what do you want me to do? Pero hindi ka nagbabasa ng Bible. Sometimes, we're so caught up with God's will. Parang minsan natatakot tayo mag-decide. How many of you were like that? I was like that before. Parang, Lord, hindi ko lang kung gagawin ko to kasi niintay kong marinig yung boses mo. Lord, gusto ko makita mo na yung kidlat. Lord, natatakot akong ligawan siya. Gusto ko marinig yung voice mo. Sabihin mo siya na nga. And it takes us so long to decide and we blame it on God's will kasi hindi natin naririnig si God. But if you look at your Bibles, God has already given us so much that we need. Minsan, for example, natatako tayo mag-serve. I used this excuse before. Parang ayoko mag-serve sa ministry. Ayoko mag-volunteer. Binigyan ako ng, ng, ng uh, skill set ni Lord to play the drums, to play the guitar. Pero ayoko mag-volunteer kasi I need to hear God's word first. I need to hear God's voice before I volunteer. If you look at your Bible, never did someone make a mistake by serving God. It is written in the Bible to serve God with your talents. And then you're waiting for His confirmation. Ando na nasa Bible na. Just read your Bibles. Sometimes we're so afraid, anong gagawin ko sa pera na to? Gag gagamitin ko ba sa mabuti? Or ipapangsugal ko na lang? Lord, what do you want me to do? <laughs> read your Bibles. It's there. God has already spoken to us. Kaya nga siya tinawag the God's word because it's His voice in that book. 
God's will is already written in your Bibles. You just have to read. You don't have to hear God's voice audibly or extravagantly. You just need to read His word intently and consistently. And as you read God's word, slowly you will understand kung ano ba talaga yung gusto ni God para sa atin. Amen? Kaya tignan mo ulit katabi mo, sabihin mo, magbasa tayo ng Bible. So when we read God's word, how do we respond? We respond in obedience. Just like the seed that is planted, the seed that God has planted, we have to properly care for. And that is God's word for us. So we respond in obedience. Number two, God's word sustains us during the storm. So when Noah was in the ark, nung may bagyo, nung malakas yung bagyo, what sustained Noah? Napaisip ba kayo? Kasi for 370 days, Noah was in the ark. Sa tingin nyo, paano sila kumain? How do you think Noah ate? Paano yung dalawang baka lang dinala niya? Tapos gagawin niya pang rib ice steak yung isa. Paano yun? So what did Noah eat? So some of you might think siguro Noah ate the eggs ng mga chicken, di ba? Mga gatas, ganun, produce. Pero alam niyo, while I was reading the story, I realized, did you know that Noah was a vegetarian? Noah and his family were not allowed to eat animal products. Because during Noah's time, hindi pa inalaw ni Lord na kumain ng mga uh, hayop. It was only after the flood that God allowed Noah to consume animals. So during the flood, during the whole time that he was in the ark, Noah was not allowed to eat any of the animals or the produce that they provided. The one thing that sustained Noah was that he obeyed God when God said to bring food into the ark. And when Noah was in the ark, it was told by scholars na when the rain stopped, there was just enough sunshine for Noah to grow veg- vegetation inside the ark. So nakagrow siya ng mga, ano, mga lettuce, mga gulay. Diba? Sarap na mga, ano, niya, mga, ano, mga fresh vegetables na luto niya doon. He was able to do that because of God's provision. And in the same way for us, it's God's word that will sustain us during the storm. If God did not follow, uh, if Noah did not follow God's specific instructions, how many of you know he would not survive in the ark for that long? In Genesis chapter 8, verse 1, it says here, But God remembered Noah. Can everyone say, God remembered? So what does this mean? Ibig sabihin ba nakalimutan ni God si Noah? Ganun ba yun? God forgot about Noah and then, ay, o nga pala. May creation nga pala ako sa ark. O nga pala, si Noah nga pala. Do you think ganun si God? No, God is not like that. God does not forget. Si God ay hindi katulad nung nang iwan sa'yo. Na kinalimutan ka na lang. God always remembers. <laughs> God remembered Noah and all of the livestock that were with him in the ark. So when we look at the word remember here, in other translations, it says that God never forgot Noah. So I want this to speak to us this morning. If you are in a situation that you feel like you can't see or feel God around you, I want you to know that God has not forgotten about you. Can you tell your neighbor, God will never forget about you? Sometimes when we are at our lowest point, when we feel like parang hindi natin nararamdaman si God. How many of you have experienced? Pag bago kong Christian, parang very ano ko pa eh, parang lahat na lang naririnig mo si Lord. Di ba? Pag nagda-drive ka, puro worship music, puro praise music, puro ganun pag fresh Christian ka. Pero as it gets longer and longer, suddenly you start experiencing periods of drought. You experience periods of dryness. And there are times when you read the Bible and you just can't feel anything. Naranasan niyo na ba yun? Nagbabasa ka ng Bible tapos, Lord, bakit ganun? Dati pag nagbabasa ako, parang umiiyak-iyak pa ako. Nababasa pa yung Bible kasi puro luha ako. But ganyan, Lord, parang wala akong maramdaman. How many of you are glad that God's presence does not rely on our feelings? Whether we feel God or not, He is there for us. 
Whether we see Him or not, God is always there for us. And it, in our lowest point in our lives, sa pinaka lowest point in our lives, it's even more crucial that we cling on to God's Word. Because when we are at our lowest point, it's God's Word that can sustain us. Kapag mababa pa no? kapag when everything's going wrong in your life, that's where the temptation comes in to let go. Eh. That's where the temptation comes in to give up. This is one of my favorite verses in Psalms 34, verse 18. It says, The Lord is close to the brokenhearted. He rescues those whose spirits are crushed. How many of you here are brokenhearted? Show of hands. Okay, tasang kamay. Okay. Kung katabi mo yan, pwede pa. Ta, ano? Pat that person on the shoulder. Say, I'm praying for you. <laughs> so many of us have experienced heartbreak before. In other translations, <clears throat> in ERV, it says, The Lord is close to those who have suffered disappointment. He saves those who are discouraged. How many of you have been disappointed at least once in your life? Malami sa atin. Maybe all of us have been discouraged, have felt disappointment. But you know, at those moments that you are feeling your lowest, that is the closest that God will ever be to you. How many of you are familiar with the Netflix series Beef? Meron ba? <laughs> Naninig na? So the Netflix series Beef, natuwa ako kasi may nag-post lang na friend namin. Tapos there was a church scene in the series. So na-curious kami, so we ended up watching it. Medyo weird lang yung ending. Hindi eh, ko kayo isa spoil, I'm not Pastor Edward. So <laughs> you can watch it for yourself. But I love this one scene in that series. It was the church scene. <clears throat> yung tao kasi dun, he was at his lowest point in his life. He wasn't exactly Christian, pero parang in-invite siya sa church. Yung parang pinilit lang siya ng friend niya, kinulit siya. Sino sa inyo umaten kayo ng church dahil may nangulit sa inyo? <laughs> dahil may nagpilit sa inyo? Magulang, tito, tita, baka katabi mo ngayon, <laughs> asawa mo. Alam niyo, be thankful for those people because they did not give up on you. When this person went to church, this was his reaction when the worship music started. He started crying. Take note, he was not exactly Christian. He did not study the Word of God, but he was at his lowest point in his life. And the moment the worship started, he started breaking down in tears. How many of you have experienced that before? Di ba parang ang sarap mag-worship when you're at the lowest point of your life? When you have nothing else left? Yung wala ka nang tatakbuhan? When you've hit rock bottom and the only way for you is up? That is one of the best feelings. And when we are at our lowest point, it's God's word that will be there for us. It's at our lowest point that we are most tempted to let go. So I want to encourage you, don't give up. When we cling on to God's word, it not only prepares us for the storms that are about to come, it also sustains us kapag nandun na tayo sa bagyo. If you are going through something in your life right now, you know exactly how this feels. So how do we respond? We respond in trust and faith. We trust that God is still in control and we have faith in the word that we have read. Just when it feels like life's about to break you, remember that you're one step away from a breakthrough. Sometimes kapag ano tayo, pag bagong ano tayo, bagong Christian, diba excited tayo, we love attending church all the time, worshiping ganun. Pero when it starts to get to the lowest point, parang gusto mo nang bumitaw. Sino dito gusto nang bumitaw? Hindi ako kakanta. May ubo ko ngayon eh. Pag wala sana eh. Yung mga ano, level ni Gigi. So when you're at your lowest point and the storms start coming and it feels like nothing's going right, na-experience nyo yun? Na minsan kapag may mga times sa life natin na one thing goes wrong, tapos patong-patong na siya. Di ba ganun? Yung minsan parang nagmamadali ka kasi nalilate ka na tapos malalaglag yung mga gamit, tapos masisira yung, yung sinakyan yung tricycle, tatanggal yung gulong, tapos ang dami nangyayari, parang everything's going wrong today. And I know a lot of us have experienced that. There are some days that when that happens, tuloy-tuloy yung mga nangyayari. Parang bagyo talaga. If you have not yet experienced that, don't worry, you will. And once you experience that, you will remember this day. <laughs> na parang may one thing lang na nagkamali, tuloy-tuloy na. Everything just keeps piling and piling up and everything is going wrong. Pero alam niyo, when those things happen, hold on to God's word, 
hold on to what he has promised because when you get through that there is breakthrough waiting for you there is no breakthrough without first breaking I love this quote Sabi dito, breakthroughs often come right after the moments when you wanted to quit but didn't so can you turn to your neighbor right now and say don't quit Sabi mo sa katabi mo hindi pa huli ang lahat Sabihin mo sa katabi mo, may pag-asa pa. <laughs> With feelings pa yung iba, no? Don't let go because right after the storms that you are experiencing right now is a breakthrough waiting to happen. And we claim that in the name of Jesus. There is a breakthrough waiting for you right now. If you are in a storm, just hold on. So going back to the story of Noah, it's God's word who prepared him for the storm. During the storm, it was God's word that sustained him And then after the storm, talking about breakthroughs, it was God's word that led him to a breakthrough after the storm. In Genesis chapter 8, verse 20, it says, Then Noah built an altar to the Lord and took some of every clean animal and some of every clean bird and offered burnt offerings on the altar. This was Noah's response. Kasi when Noah was in the ark, I'm sure maraming problema yun. Imagine one whole year. Kayong eight lang magkakasama. They were eight in their family. Di ba magkakasama lang sila? Kami nga sa bahay, bago ako nakasal, parang one year lang kami magkakasama. Galit na galit na sa amin yung nanay namin. <laughs> Pag birthday niya nga, gusto niya na mag-hotel sa labas para away from us. <laughs> Di ba it gets stressful? Di ba nung pandemic, ilang months lang yun? Sino sa inyo, nung pandemic, parang mababaliw ka na. Every day you're with the same people. And then imagine Noah was in the ark for 370 days. Tapos naaamoy niya yung mga baho ng mga hayop. Iba't ibang hayop. Ang dami niya naaamoy. Di ba? Everything was uh, crazy during Noah's time in the flood. So you can imagine the relief when suddenly may nakita ng araw si Noah. Di ba? When suddenly the water was going down and then everything started to settle. Can you imagine the feeling Noah had? That's why when he was out of the ark, the only response he had was to worship God. Lord, thank you. You sustained me. It was because of you that I survived the storm. In our response, when we go to the seed, diba? balik tayo sa seed, tinanim na ni Lord yung buto. He already planted the seed of provision. Our job is to handle it with care, to use the provision for the right things, to honor God, use the provision in the right way, and then it's God's miracle that will make it grow and bear fruit. And once that bears fruit, kapag tayo na experience na natin yung breakthrough sa life natin, what is our response? We respond in gratitude and worship. Because breakthroughs will happen. Do you believe that? It's not a matter of will God bless me or not. It's not a matter of will God give me breakthrough or not. It's a matter of when. Eventually, God will bring you that breakthrough. And when that happens, my prayer is that we don't forget who blessed us. Kasi minsan, kapag dumating na yung blessings, dumating na yung breakthrough, we start forgetting the person who gave it. Naranasan nyo na ba magbigay ng regalo sa isang tao? Tapos nakalimutan niyang ikaw pala nagbigay. God has given us so much and God will continue to give us in our breakthroughs. My prayer is that when that happens, we always go back to Him. We respond in gratitude and worship. Because the whole time that we are living here, God has already provided for us. Working miracles in our lives. And I love this in Genesis chapter 9, verse 1. Hindi pa nagtapos doon. It says, God blessed Noah. Can you say, God blessed Noah? God blessed Noah and his sons and said to them, Be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth. Ang ganda tignan, because when you look at Genesis chapter 8, verse 1, the first thing it says is that God remembered Noah. And the first thing it says in chapter 9 is that God blessed Noah. So if you are here today and you feel like you can't see or feel God working in your lives, I want to encourage you right now. God has not forgotten about you. And eventually, God will bless you. So as we end, can I call on the music team? 
Alam nyo, God has already blessed us enough. Alam nyo ba that miracles happen in our lives daily? Do you believe that? Sometimes we just take the miracles for granted. Alam nyo, on our way here, nasa sasakyan kami, we were driving to here, Robinson's. Tapos yung usapan namin ng wife ko, we were talking about how so many things could go wrong while you're driving a car. Alam nyo ba yun? Magkamali ka lang ng liko, pwede kang makabangga ng tao, pwede kang makasira ng gamit. Ang sadista ng usapan namin. <laughs> Ganun yung usapan namin papunta sa church. But then we realized it's a miracle that nothing bad has happened yet. And the fact that you are here this morning is already a miracle in itself. Do you agree? The fact that the sun is still shining right now is a miracle in itself. The fact that there were moments in our life that we felt our lowest and yet God has provided for us to get through it is a miracle in itself. And God is not done yet. God has always been faithful in our lives and He will continue to be faithful. All it takes is a little work from us to handle His provisions with proper care, a little patience and faith to trust God. And then it just needs a little bit of God's power to make it grow. So can we stand up today and I want to pray for everyone. I love what R.C. was talking about when he did uh, the exhortation kanina. Sabi niya that God has already provided us the grace it takes for us to start over. And maybe some of you here, that is the breakthrough that you need right now. Maybe you are here right now, you have done something that you have regretted. Maybe may mga ginawa kang kasalanan na other people have not forgiven you yet. Maybe you're at the point in your life where you just want to start over. Alam you, God's grace is exactly what you need. When you look at the picture of Noah, when God flooded the entire earth, wiped it clean, it was a picture of the gospel. It was a picture of God washing out sin, washing out the past, washing out everything that used to be and replacing it with something new. And I believe right now, God is bringing us to a new place. God is transitioning us to a new season. And right now, I believe God is asking us to let go of the past. Just open your hands, let go of what used to hurt you. Let go of what is keeping you from moving forward because God wants to bless you this morning. God wants you to experience a breakthrough. We just need to be open to receiving it. So God, I thank you for everyone here, Lord. God, we thank you that your mercies, your grace is new every morning, Lord. God, maybe there are things in our lives that we've done that we are still getting to this day. Maybe there are things that we have done that the damage that it did is still painful up to this day. Maybe there are things that we are having a hard time letting go of because it still hurts up to now. But Lord, we thank you that you are just letting go of your grace right now, overflowing it through us, that we are able to let go of these things. Open our hands to receiving brand new things from you. Lord, we can't help but respond in worship to what you are about to do in our lives. So God, I pray for everyone here. Lord, I pray for your grace to just abound in us, Lord. I pray, Lord, that you wash out clean anything that has been holding us back from giving our all to you, God. And I pray, Lord, and we declare, Lord, in the name of Jesus, that breakthrough will happen in our lives. Lord, we are declaring that, that this year, O oh Lord, in the next few months, we will experience your grace, God, your breakthroughs and provisions. So Lord, we just want to worship you this morning. Thank you for being faithful to us, being the miracle worker in our lives, God, for always giving us a chance at new beginnings. So Lord, we give this all back to you and we worship you in Jesus' name.
and God is just waiting for you to let go so that you can move on to that breakthrough. I want us to read from Isaiah chapter 43, verses 18 to 21. I want us to read from the ERV version. Can we all read it together? So don't remember what happened in earlier times. Don't think about what happened a long time ago because I am doing something new. Now you will grow like a new plant. Surely you know this is true. I will even make a road in the desert and rivers will flow through dry land. The wild animals will thank me. The large animals and birds will honor me when I put water in the desert and make rivers flow through the dry land. I will do this to give water to my chosen people. I made them and they will sing songs of praise to me. God is telling us to let go of what happened in the earlier times because He is doing something new in our lives. God is giving us new beginnings today and He's waiting for us to let go of the past because God is just waiting to give us new breakthroughs today. So my prayer is that we have the boldness to let go. We become fearless in letting go of the past. I know na mahirap means that we have to step out of our comfort zone and sometimes we feel like we're still waiting for God to give us a sign. Let this be the sign that God is telling you to move forward right now because God wants to do great things in your life. Lord, we thank you for your service this morning. We thank you for the provision of your word, God. And I pray, Lord, that you will give us the strength, God, to just transition into a new state of our lives, oh God, into a new place, Lord, where you are giving us provision upon provision and breakthrough upon breakthrough. And we declare this in our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Thank you, everyone coming this morning. We hope you have a blessed Sunday and a blessed week ahead. So God bless you all. See you again next Sunday.